Looking forward to seeing this, okay? So I'm 67 and my body doesn't stretch, doesn't do things that it used to do, doesn't do things what uh, real players do, but I can develop, I can still develop the feeling and I'm gonna be hitting off a machine here that's throwing 32 miles an hour from 16 feet. Uh, if a pitcher releases the ball from 55 feet, that's the equivalent of 110 mile an hour reaction time. Of course, the ball's not moving 110, so it's not the same, but it does require a level of quickness that is important to be competitive when you swing a bat in a game. Um, when I instruct, I almost always start with the tee. Whether it's a, if it's a new student, we spend a lot of time on the tee. Uh, if it's an experienced student, we just basically warm up the tee, on the tee and get a few feels. And then we move to flips and then we move to the machine. So I'm gonna turn the machine on. It might take me two or three or four balls to, to get it dialed in, but I'm going to take some cuts and then I'm gonna come back and tell you uh, what I was doing or trying to do, but before I start, Here's the goal. The goal is to show off my bicep. Not really, but that movement that a, that a person would do to show his bicep brings the hand to the shoulder. You close the elbow joint. I'm going to take some cuts where I'm doing my damnedest not to let that open. And of course, you're gonna see it open because it has to open to, uh, to cover the zone, to get an outside pitch, or you were a little early, so you had to let it out a little bit early. But I'm gonna take swings where it feels like this, where I'm absolutely not letting my elbow joint extend. I'm not letting my hand leave my shoulder. I say all the time when I give lessons that the arms are the enemy. And they are. However, they do have a role, but the role that everybody wants or allows them to play is detrimental to your swing. It's detrimental to the high level pattern. So it's going to feel, when I swing the bat, it's going to feel like this is all I'm doing. I'm keeping my elbow or my forearm vertical. When I say vertical, it's vertical when I'm standing up and down. But when I bend over into my stance, it's not vertical. But I'm keeping my elbow closed as long as I can. This gives me the feeling that this hand, like I've cut my arm off, and that my hand is installed on my shoulder. Okay? And all I can do is supinate and tilt. Okay? When I get this feeling, there's a great sinkage. There's a great connection between my hand, my shoulder, my hip, my leg. Okay, everything moves together. When we're facing pitching, we want the barrel to whip out and get in front of our hands. Okay, very simple concept. We want the barrel to whip, and that little whip is where we get uncommon speed from. We do that by stretch and fire and snap our barrel, just like we know. Watch what happens, if this is good, the barrel whipping in front of my hands, watch what happens when I let my hand out first and then the whip. The whip happens way late. It happens way out front. I'm very likely to go to my front leg if I do that too soon, okay? So if I want the suddenness of the whip forget to get that barrel to whip out in front of the hands, this hand has to stay back as long as physically possible. Again, you're gonna look at the video and you're gonna see my hand move. It has to, to get the barrel to the ball, okay? The hand movement, the arm letting out, is not a power production move. It's a alignment move. And so when it's a power production move and your barrel, your hands get this far forward, before the barrel whips, it's taking a long time for that to happen. You've got two moves. You've got this and then that, even if you do it fast, okay? So, but if we can keep this hand back here, 
that barrel will whip. All right, here we go. Good, not the best, but pretty good. Okay. Took me five or six to get it dialed in, and then I had this amazing feeling that this hand pivot point and that tilt were completely synced up, that the hand was staying right here at launch, and that the whip was created, and then I let the barrel to the direction of the ball. Okay. Now I'm going to show you some videos using my phone. Watch his hands, how they stay right there. He's got a good bend in his arm. Trying to get this so you can see it. Okay, got a better one of him later. Here's Mike Trout. Okay, yes, the arm actually does lower a little bit, not much, but where was it at the moment of launch? We're talking a 30th of a second in a 30 frame per second video. That arm is bent, elbow is pinched, or bicep is pinched, if you will, snap. This one happens way quick. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Juan Soto. Soto, Soto it's like his Soto, hands Soto, are attached to his shoulder, like Soto, he doesn't have a rear arm. The rear arm is folded up, if you will. Elbow closed. And a quick snap from there. A, a video I've used forever about Manny. Okay? Hand staying right at the shoulder through launch, and then it starts to drop a little bit to align to the ball.